say goodbye to overwhelming textbooks and hello to vibrant interconnected mind maps. We welcome you to our new series of videos where we pick each mind map from our mind map bundle and help you run through all the important points you need to remember for your exams. In this mind map, we will cover some important concepts on a very important topic of public health dentistry, epidemiology. But stay tuned because we have an exciting surprise for you at the end of this video. Epidemiology is the study of distribution and determinants of health-related states or events in specified populations. It involves analyzing patterns, causes and impacts of diseases and other health outcomes to inform public health interventions and control measures. Consider the father of epidemiology, John Snow made significant contributions to the field in the 19th century. The epidemiological triad is a conceptual framework used to understand the complex interplay between three key elements in the development and spread of diseases, which comprises of the agent, the host and the environment. The interaction and interdependence of these three components play a crucial role in the occurrence and spread of diseases. In epidemiology, several tools of measurement are commonly used to quantify and understand the occurrence and distribution of health-related events in populations. Some of these tools include rates, ratios and proportions. Let's take a look at them. First up, a rate measures the occurrence of an event within a specific population over a given time period. It is calculated by dividing the number of events that occurred in a specified period by the population at risk and then multiplying it by a multiplier often 10 raised to the power of n for ease of interpretation. Next up is ratio. A ratio represents the relationship in size between two random quantities. The numerator and denominator of a ratio are not necessarily related. Ratios are used to compare two different groups or populations. Lastly, we have proportion, which is a ratio that expresses the magnitude of a part of a whole. The numerator of a proportion is always a part of the denominator. Proportions are commonly used to express the frequency of a specific outcome or characteristic relative to the total population. Basic measurements in epidemiology, such as mortality and morbidity, provide valuable information to assess the burden of diseases, monitor trends, and evaluate the effectiveness of public health interventions and healthcare systems. Measurement of mortality can be done by different rates, such as the crude death rate, specific death rate, proportional mortality rate, case fatality rate, infant mortality rate, and survival rate. Amongst these, you can quickly look at a few points about case fatality rate, infant mortality rate, and survival rate in this section of our mind map and note them down as important points. Measurement of morbidity can be done by calculating incidence and prevalence. They can also be used as measures to determine disease frequency. Let's go over a few points about them. Incidence measures the number of new cases of a disease or health condition that occur within a specific population during a defined time period. It is calculated by dividing the number of new cases by the population at risk and is often expressed per unit of population. For example, per thousand or hundred thousand population. It is expressed as a rate. Incidence rates can range from zero to infinity and are commonly used in cohort studies to determine disease occurrence. There can be two types of incidence, episodic and cumulative. There are also special types of incidence rates, which include primary attack rate and secondary attack rate. It is important to note that incidence helps take action against controlling the disease and is the best measure of disease frequency in etiological studies. The next one is prevalence. Prevalence measures the total number of existing cases of a disease or health condition within a specific population during a defined time period. It includes both new and pre-existing cases. Prevalence is calculated by dividing the number of cases by the total population and is often expressed as a proportion. Prevalence can range from 0 to 
there are two types of prevalence point prevalence and period prevalence point prevalence represents the proportion of individuals who have a specific disease at a specific point in time it is calculated by dividing the total number of current cases by the estimated total population at the same point in time on the other hand period prevalence represents the proportion of individuals who have a specific disease over a defined period of time it takes into account the total number of current cases during the specified time interval and the estimated mid interval population at risk prevalence helps identify high risk populations estimate the burden of a disease in a population and guide resource allocation for healthcare planning and intervention strategies hopefully you have understood the differences between incidence and prevalence let's quickly go over some important points before wrapping up this discussion on epidemiology prevalence is influenced by the incidence of new cases and the average duration of the disease prevalence is calculated by multiplying the incidence rate by the mean duration of the disease this assumes a stable population and constant incidence and duration factors that can increase prevalence include longer duration of the disease an increase in new cases prolongation of life without a cure in migration of cases or susceptible individuals out migration of healthy individuals and improved diagnostic facilities factors that can decrease prevalence include shorter duration of the disease a decrease in new cases a high case fatality rate out migration of cases in migration of healthy individuals and improved cure rates ultra short diseases like food poisoning tend to have a lower prevalence compared to their incidence acute diseases like influenza often have a prevalence similar to their incidence chronic diseases like diabetes tend to have a higher prevalence compared to their incidence in the case of scenarios with a zero duration such as suicides the prevalence would be zero as there are no existing cases with this we come to the end of this mind map discussion hopefully we have helped you revise some important concepts in the vast topic of epidemiology and now for the much awaited surprise at the end of the video you can now access our mind map collection on the app and apply coupon code mindmap10 for 10% off on the videos so head over to the app quickly as this offer is only limited to this week happy learning